The opening scene starts with Truman and Patricia peacefully asleep until an unfamiliar sound jolts them awake. Suspecting an intruder, they cautiously descend the stairs, only to discover a girl slumbering on the couch, clearly under the influence of narcotics. Truman recognizes her as one of his clients who had stayed over after a party the previous night. He wakes her and firmly requests her departure. It's revealed that Truman, a struggling businessman, regularly hosts small parties in hopes of securing deals with his clients. Later, Truman, as usual, instructs his wife to prepare dinner as he plans to woo a significant client. Patricia, visibly perturbed by the seemingly fruitless gatherings, questions their value. However, Truman remains optimistic, believing that this particular deal could resolve their debts and mortgages. Despite their financial strain, Truman impulsively splurges on an expensive car to impress the client, much to Patricia's dismay. She voices her frustration, highlighting their existing debt burden. Despite her willingness to seek part-time work, Truman insists she remain at home. In the next scene, we're introduced to Alex Weston, an affluent businessman, his wife Marina, their son Robbie, and their houseworker, Belle. The Westons are consumed by their work, neglecting household responsibilities and even their son. When Belle reminds them of Robbie's birthday, they dismissively delegate the task of wishing him well on their behalf, further illustrating their preoccupation with work over family. After overhearing his parents' conversation, Robbie, clearly disheartened, is uplifted when Belle surprises him with a cake and birthday gift. Despite this, Robbie's spirits plummet when he approaches his crush Cheryl at school and is politely rejected. Saddened by the rejection, Robbie decides to skip classes and drives off. Later, Alex learns of Robbie's truancy and confronts him at home, emphasizing the importance of academic success for securing admission to a top university. As punishment, Alex confiscates Robbie's car keys. Meanwhile, Truman eagerly hosts his wealthy client Manson for dinner, hoping to finalize a crucial deal. However, Manson's attention is solely fixed on Patricia. Aged Patricia confides in Truman, seeking his support. However, Truman, prioritizing the deal, advises her to comply with Manson's advances. Reluctantly, Patricia agrees, sacrificing her dignity. The following morning, Truman learns that the deal he had worked tirelessly for has been awarded to Alex. Despite his attempts to plead his case with his boss, Mike, Truman is informed that Alex is deemed a more valuable asset to the company. Devastated, Truman returns home to share the news with Patricia, who is equally affected by the setback. The following day, Truman's uncharacteristic decision to work on a Sunday surprises Patricia. However, his actions take a tragic turn when he enters his office and, overcome by despair, the news of Truman's death leaves Patricia shattered. A few days following Truman's death, Patricia visits his office and meets with his boss, Mike, seeking information about Truman's insurance policy. However, Mike coldly informs her that the policy is void due to Truman's tragic actions. Undeterred, Patricia heads to her husband's cabin to collect his belongings. While there, she covertly extracts crucial data from his computer, harboring a fierce determination to avenge her husband's death. Patricia's first act of vengeance is directed at Manson, whom she confronts at his residence, unflinchingly shooting him in broad daylight. Subsequently, she begins to closely monitor Alex's activities, eventually discovering his son, Robbie. Posing as a concerned parent, Patricia obtains a school letterhead from Robbie's institution, later utilizing it to fabricate a letter to Robbie's parents, emphasizing the necessity of a tutor for his academic success. The following day, Patricia receives a phone call from Marina, Alex's wife, inviting her for a discussion at their home. Disguising herself as Amanda, Patricia visits Robbie's residence. When Marina inquires about the start date for tutoring, Patricia fabricates a story about needing time due to ongoing renovations at her own home and mentions the need to find temporary accommodation. Robbie, eager to assist, offers their guest house as a potential living space for her. Agreeing with their son's suggestion, Alex and Marina offer Patricia the guest home, an offer she eagerly accepts. Beginning the following day, Patricia picks up Robbie. As they return to the guest house, over time, Patricia cultivates a friendship with Marina, using it as an opportunity to gather more information about the family and gain her trust. By assisting Marina with various tasks, 
Patricia discovers Marina's reliance on anxiety medication. Armed with this knowledge, she begins surreptitiously adding narcotics to Marina's coffee and wine, subtly undermining her health. The next morning, Patricia engages in a friendly conversation with Alex before returning to her room. There, she discovers Belle installing blinds on her window, prompting Patricia to decide to eliminate the older woman. Finding Belle alone at home attending to laundry, Patricia discreetly enters the house and heads to the basement. Craftily, she sets a trap using a thin wire and removes the light bulb. Later, Belle descends the darkened staircase, tripping over the wire and tragically passing away. Upon Robbie's return home from school, she arrives home from work, calling out for Belle. With no response, she investigates and discovers Belle's lifeless body in the basement. In the aftermath of this tragic discovery, authorities handle Belle's remains while Marina struggles to come to terms with the loss. That night, Patricia approaches Alex, who is visibly upset by the recent events, engaged in a game of snooker. The next day, she volunteers to stay in Marina's care, given Belle's absence. Following her pattern, Patricia drugs Marina's coffee and contacts the pharmacy, assuming Marina's identity to procure more pills, contributing to Marina's declining health. Later, Patricia visits Robbie's room, apologizing for his earlier witnessing of the pool room incident. Deceitfully, she asserts that Alex coerced her, fueling Robbie's hatred towards his father. One day, Patricia offers Marina another drugged coffee, hinting that her house will be ready soon, indicating her departure. Marina, grateful for Patricia's friendship, begins to suspect foul play when she experiences dizziness after drinking the coffee. That night, Robbie bids farewell to Patricia as he leaves for his new out-of-state university. Meanwhile, Marina, Alone in her house during a heavy rainstorm, feels frightened. She receives unsettling phone calls and experiences power cuts. Equipping herself with a knife, she investigates a noisy from the basement, fearing the worst. Venturing downstairs to investigate, Marina is startled by Alex's sudden return home from work, nearly causing her to mistakenly stab him. Despite Marina's attempts to make Alex understand Patricia's true nature, he brushes off her claims and walks away. In the morning, Alex notices Patricia's car number and recalls seeing a similar car driven by Truman. Upon reaching the office, he searches through Truman's belongings and discovers a photograph featuring Truman and Patricia. Concerned, Alex confides in his boss, Mike, who confirms that Patricia is indeed Truman's wife. This revelation sends Alex into a panic, prompting him to desperately try to contact Marina. Failing to reach her, he contacts the police and rushes to his wife's aid. Meanwhile, at home, Patricia confronts Marina with a sinister intent to end her life. She restrains Marina, securing her to the bed and forces her to ingest a pill, intending to make it appear as a suicide. Just as Patricia is about to carry out her plan, Alex arrives in the nick of time to intervene. With Patricia's identity exposed, she boldly admits to her actions, including her physical relationship with their son, angering Alex. He slaps her and pushes her through the window. Shortly after, the police arrive at the scene, but Patricia appears to have fled by then. The police help the couple calm down, ensuring their safety. Later that night, the couple receives a reassuring call from their son, who shares that he is adjusting well to his new environment. Thank you for watching. Subscribe.